Welcome to another episode of The Trenches. Today, I got my brother Milo Eifler on the show. What up, big dog? Yeah. Man, appreciate you coming on today. Um, you in LA, you've been out here, you're having some fun. My first question is, are you still working out while you out here? Yeah, got definitely, it's priority. Okay. Um, you know, uh, staying in shape, you know, prepares you, you know, for the unexpected. I like to stay ready, for sure. not have to get ready. Hello. Um, so tell me what your draft process been like and like from the jump, because a lot of people, I don't even know the full process, what it's like, like from after the end of the game, like trying to talk to an agent and, you know, answering calls, like how do they prep you? Like, let me know how your whole draft process been, how it started for people who don't know what it's like. Yeah. So for me, um, started a little later than, um, than people, you know, usually mm -hmm. expect, you know, I, I transferred. So, um, Moving, you know, to a new school and getting situated was kind of where I found my more focus at. Mm -hmm. And then after that, kind of establishing my myself as a player mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, kind of proving myself to the coaching staff mm -hmm. and, and to me as well. Because uh, it was my first year when I when I played at Illinois. That was my first year back mm -hmm. um, playing the whole season and not on special teams and nothing like that. So um, that's kind of where. I, uh, I wanted to put, you know, more energy in. And then once once that came in, then, of course, you know, the draft cost. Everybody wants to play in, in the league. You know, that's kind of why you put on the pads and you kind of want to, you know, make something out of yourself. Mm -hmm. So once I, once I found myself in that position, um, you know, I, I reached out to some of my close friends that were already in, uh, in the league. Yep. Um, they kind of pointed me in the right direction, you know, uh, gave me ins and outs of what, what kind of, um, you know, agent I should be looking out for, and um, you know, kind of what what I want uh, or like my priorities. You know, if I want the, you know, big agency, if I want a smaller one, or um, kind of uh, making my own little list, pretty much, kind of, kind of finding my perfect perfect agent. And um, after uh, after the season, I ended up uh, signing with uh, Elite Management. Elite athlete management out of uh, Arizona. They got a couple of my uh, good friends on there. Okay. But um, I mean, coming coming when it came down to that, it was just you know uh, long talks with family members and really you know sitting down and discussing where where uh, you know kind of where I want to put my okay. uh, future investments in. Okay. And then once you got an agent, what was the next step for you? Um, once I got an agent, got to figure out where I'm training at. And um, for, for me, it was uh, Exos in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, you know, uh, once again, her good feedback. Uh, had a couple of my friends go there too. So I've uh, seen the results. Yeah. And, like you know, what you saw? Exactly. <laughs> okay. And then now, like, what's the process like since we what, we like a week and a half away? Yeah. We're like a week and a half away. So where are you at right now? You just finished training. Um, just finished training at XL, so now you're in LA, you're chilling, you're gonna stay out here for Yeah, for the draft. Process. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have my family fly out here and uh, um, my family from the bay is driving down. So okay. yeah, everybody's kinda of linking up out here. Okay, so how does it feel to finally be here? Like I know that you know this probably been a thing for a minute. So it's like now that you're in a position, like, how does that feel to you? Um man, I would even for myself, I don't know, I I like to even even when I Still think I have a little something, or I, I, I'm up a little bit. Yeah. I still think, you know, I still ain't made it yet. Uh -huh. You know what okay. I'm saying? So like, um, but no, it feels good to be in this position because yeah. you know you've been countless hours of you know work getting put in to to even be able to say you know you're you're going to be in the NFL draft or mm -hmm. trying to hear your name called on draft mm -hmm. day. So um, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a blessing to yeah. be honest, but. Uh, Man, also, you know, a couple of nerves in there, you know, you don't know where you're going to end up. And, of course, everybody asking, you know, oh, well, you know, what's, what's going on with the draft? Yeah. You know, everybody, you know, want their two cents. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to stay level-headed with, with everything going on. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, you know, just in the off time, just kind of staying away from all that and just, you know, doing what I do is I kicking like it with it. the homies and lock in when that's working out or even just – just chilling for real, just okay. kind of staying away from it, just, you know, being, being me love for a little bit. Okay. So 
now that you you know this draft process not coming to an end but like coming to that that big highlight portion of it um what's something that that has went on and that you'd have to do like that you had no idea like you had to figure out has it it been any like hardships in the draft process um yeah when it comes to uh you know remembering why you messed up and like you know some teams are kind of pinpoints and you know they always want to highlight the good plays but the bad plays and yeah. kind of figuring out what you saw during the plays and you know like that's like the the point where I'm like oh yeah of course I'm gonna watch all my good plays but I gotta watch my bad plays okay. too of course you know you do that in practice and you do that in the, when it comes to game film yeah. and anything but re-watching that and you know not just always going to your best plays yeah. of course you know teams are going to show your best plays but uh you know kind of re-watching that and making sure you know you, you're on top of your corrections and okay. knowing, knowing your mistakes. So when coaches call you, they be bringing up some of your bad plays? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, especially like on Zoom, the Zoom calls, they show, uh, usually, you know, sometimes they show their film, like what, what scheme they're running, yeah. or most of the time they pull up your film uh, from college. Okay, and then they just start grilling. You know, like yeah, what you- it, was more, it was more like analyze or something okay. like, a, like a critical, critical, uh, yeah thinking tight, you know, but definitely, I would say, like, they definitely, they're trying to get a little answer out of you. They're trying to, you know, poke okay. you a little bit, you know, okay. trying to, That's different. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely different, okay. for sure. So now that draft price is kind of coming to an end, um, what do you think is something that you do to prepare yourself that separates you from others? Um, it's saying in just in, in general, like, pregame or... Um, or just like your off season, you know, some people feel like they went in the off season. Some people feel like their ability to, you know, understand the scheme. Like, what do you think is in you that helps separate you from others? Um, everybody's not going to get to that. Of course. Uh, I feel like I'm, uh, that, that opportunity is going to come when, when, when the, the team that picks me, uh, gets to see me in, in person in mm-hmm. action. They're going to, it's that, oh, that, that factor, it's going to be that, mm. a lot of, a lot of people don't have that. They're going to be like, okay. <laughs> okay. So you feel like when people see you, like, what, like, you feel like people can see you, like, your passion, like, like what yeah, is it? Yeah, it's like, just my, my drive and understanding of, you know, when I'm out there on the field, I yeah. feel like you're not stopping me. Okay. Like, like I'm, I'm finna win this rep. Yeah, okay. You know if I don't, let's go again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, that's why I feel like, um, you know, and and when, when you know when prepping comes, you know, a lot of people like to do different things. I like to, I like to train. I like to do beach workouts. You know, I like to, uh, um, you know, hills. I like to do a lot of cross. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I just got into Pilates. Okay, uh, it's hard, it's real hard. I ain't never did uh, that, man. But I mean, just making sure my, you know, I'm in tune with my body. Okay, um, I mean that's that's kind of what you know is what's gonna make make myself yeah. a, make a living so now, you know the quickest way to get on that field is right man special teams and getting to that qb oh yeah most definitely come on you need to stop playing why we out here we got oh, yeah. a couple in. oh yeah 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 definitely <laughs> stop playing. definitely that's, need to get some when, when we on. get that in yeah that's gonna that's that next level because it's definitely. like nowadays that's what they paying the big dollars for is whoever get home so come on while we out here we got to get at least one in Come on. Um, so a lot of people have their thoughts on college and going to college. And what's one thing, what's the biggest takeaway that you feel like your college experience gave to you? Like some people feel like it made them grow up. It made them be independent. Like what was it for you that you feel like you can, your biggest takeaway uh, from college? I could give you a whole list, but for me it was just kind of, uh, Man, I have to say, yeah, definitely independence and time management. You feel like that? That's what it, you got the most out of it? Yeah, like doing the, getting the most out of your time. For sure, having to go to class. Having to go to class, having to go to meetings, having to go to treatment, having to go to study, study hall. hall, having a, uh, if you got a late lift or an early lift, 
um, squeeze it, you know what I'm saying? It's it's back to back to back. Ain't no and right. ain't no and when you when you late in the college, it's punishment. And of course, that's the last thing you want to do after you already worked out the at six last in the morning. Thing, because they gonna make you get exactly up early. Man, anyway. you late to class? They uh, why you late to class? Why you uh? So I, I learn. I had to learn the hard way for yeah. that. Most do like your freshman sophomore year was freshman was sophomore year it was rough. I mean, luckily I, you dub. Um, I got my act together a little bit sophomore yeah. year, but even then I still, it was like, it was, it was still, still a learning curve man, for it was still a learning curve for me. Um, and then finally when I got to Illinois, it was like, they had put that foot down because they knew. Because, you know, I watched it, of course, you know, coaches communicate. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, this is it's time. And yeah. it was just like, that was just like that. Okay. You, so you feel like when you went to Illinois, it's like. No, nah, mm-hmm. I, I woke up. It was like, oh, okay. uh, it was like that, that light switch went on and okay. it was like. It was business, and it was like, look, man, you got to take care of this. You so, start looking at it different, your whole experience. Huh? But I was like, I'm, I don't want these coaches breathing on my neck. I'm just like, I'm here to play football yeah. and get up out of here with a degree. And you know what I'm saying? With something. I feel like so many like younger guys, freshman and sophomore year, when they don't hang on, like they can go off the cliff not knowing. It'd be like, you know, sometimes we got to get used to certain situations because now the position you're going to be in, you needed that. Because if you didn't grow up then, you was gonna grow up now, and now we might not be able to hang on like that. Like we was able to hang on in college, but when you get up, um, we are not. We might not be able to always hang on. So like at least that light clicked on for you, because for a lot it don't. And I'm glad it did, because yeah. you no, know, there's definitely you know there's that you see that drop off, and it's like being an older guy on the team, being kind of a vet. You know, it was it was cool to be able to help out the youngers and mm-hmm. tell them to hey, look, do this and yeah. like make sure you cool with him and make sure you cool with her. Like, yeah. you know, they're gonna help you out eventually. You yeah. know? So um, that's kind of what like my last year at Illinois was. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of enjoying it, you know. Um, you know, after the games, or kicking it with the homies, going mm-hmm. bowling, just and and when I was out, I was in Champaign Urbana, so it was a little more. Uh, like rural college town. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you see a lot of safe faces around. And that was cool for me because at Washington, it was, you know, uh, it was diverse and a lot of people, you know, hang around who, who they like to hang around, yeah. which is they, you know, little groups and everything. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It was just like, you felt that there's more camaraderie when everybody yeah. see each other. Okay. Why did you, why did you want to leave you Doug? Um, to grow. Uh, I, I, it was no growth, you know. I felt it was where I was at, you know, it was kind of like a, I hit a wall. Not a wall, but it was like, I wasn't feeling the same energy that I was putting in mm-hmm. from the other side. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now that you look back, do you still feel like it was that way? Do you feel like it could have been a little bit of you or like how you feel about it now? Um, no, it was definitely I me. Mean, when I'm looking at it now, I was like, man, I'm. I need to change with my act, and yeah, you know, you if, feel like you could have been in a better situation. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have put myself in a better situation by not doing this, this, and this. Um, but people I was looking at it, even though I was looking at it on the other side, where even though I did this and this, but I'm still doing this. Why can't? You? Yeah, we be having to break that though. But bro, I'm telling you, it's so many people that I be talking to now, like it's your age, even some older, who closer to my age, and when they look back, they don't even be realizing like. It was us. It was you. The whole time. Yeah, it's like that whole time you start convincing yourself like, nah, it was them. And you telling everybody, yeah, you bad. You putting bad energy on the other people. And it was like, bro, it really was from inside. We had to grow a little bit. So, yeah. bro, it's good. Like, I know when you say that light clicked on, I can believe you because it's like for you to be able to look back at that and be like, you know what, it was some of me. So I might need to have to get out of that situation. So you could grow more. So for you, I know, like it seemed like it worked for you. For some people, staying might be better because they need that. And it's like it look, it seemed like it still it all worked out for you. So. Nah, definitely. Like I, I, I look back at it now. It's like Illinois is the best thing that happened to me for sure. Uh, even though, man, you look back at the record, not might be what it is, but yeah. I mean, football, football. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're gonna play. So you know, that's how I look at okay. it. How was it playing for a legendary black coach? That was, I, I, that was one of the experiences I, I, I can't take back. You for know what real? I'm saying? You like, you get to experience someone who's your skin tone, looks like you, talks mm-hmm. like you, and he's a coach and he's respected all, all around, mm-hmm. you know, multiple platforms. So I was like, 
I don't know, it's kind of like humbling a little bit, but mm. you know, he's, he's definitely a cool dude. Uh, we still stay in contact. Of course, he's now working for the Houston Texans. Yeah. So, um, man, well, who knows who, you know, what's going to happen, but. That'll be dope. Man, it will be. <laughs> yeah. That'll be hard. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it was just, yeah, it was experience. You know, he's coach, legendary linebackers. Man. So, um, one of them just won the Super Bowl. Monte David, man, he's raw. He uh, cold. Watch this tape. He uh, cold, man. Uh, so, yeah, no, it was just, it was definitely a good experience. Okay. Um, so say draft day come and you get a big, and you get a big, well, not even a big check. Say you get a check. I feel like most people ask, what's the first thing you gonna buy with it? Have you thought about the percentage of it that you gonna save? Um, yeah, um, I got, I've been having this, this conversation with my parents. Mm. Um, you know, I got a couple meetings with some financial advisors. Okay. So once I get, you know, that situation, I probably have a better answer for you. Okay. No, but just make sure yeah. you do it, bro. It, yeah. No, I make sure. We're not used to yeah. The saving coming first, for sure. Man, it, I be feeling like, you know, we're not man. used to it. And, you know, your first time. Man, you get that. You learn from eyes, somebody else before yeah, learning. Yeah, and then yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. You know, and eyebrows now. start getting. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, just yeah. learn that. So you talk about parents. Now, I've seen on a couple of things that said yeah. that you called a professor back at Cal mom. So, like, talk yeah. a little bit. Like, what's that situation on the Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. A lot of people don't know. I mean. You know, family is family, so some people like to keep it private. You know, yeah. sometimes I do, but you know, if people ask, I, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I'm I'm not a person to hide. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was adopted at a young age. My mom's uh, uh, my birth mom's from Ohio, so okay. I was born in Columbus, okay. Ohio State Hospital. Um, and then I moved to really to the Bay first. Okay. Uh, I want to say I was like maybe one, two years old. Okay. I was living out there for a quick hot second, and then. My mom got a, a job opportunity in the, all the way on the East Coast okay. in Providence, Rhode Island. So I lived out there for like until I was in the second grade, third Dang. grade. So I would say I was like probably like seven, eight years old. Okay. Came back uh, back to the Bay. Um, lived uh, up in Oakland and Berkeley. Okay. And then was staying in Berkeley uh, basically the rest of my life. Okay. And then. When you say, why did y'all keep going back to the bay? Like, did you already have family ties out there? In the um, my uh, so my birth parents, they uh, uh, my mom on that side was Rachel and David. Uh, her her mom's is, is was already out there, so uh, she okay. she she stayed in Santa Cruz. Okay. that's why she was trying to be closer out there and made more sense to okay. be in Berkeley. And then she got the job opportunity in okay. Berkeley, so everything just happened at the same time. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Um, yeah, I was in between that and LA and she was like, I'm not dealing with the traffic. And now I'm <laughs> down here, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm starting to get me, man. Man, it's a LA different. Um, do you feel like any of that has been like, you know, some of your motivation or like, like kind of how, how is that whole situation molded you as a person, as a player? Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's different, you know, you know, you don't know a lot of doctor people, so it's like already you got a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. Um, and and for me, it's just like uh, having two families is is, is, is wonderful, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's like two different worlds. Yeah. So uh, having you know to bring all that into one is kind of like where I'm f finding myself at and where okay. I need to you know put things together. So. Um, that's definitely, I mean, it's a blessing and it's just like, I'm trying to just kind of figure it out yeah. as I go through it, just kind of grow and mold as I need you to. Should. Yeah. <laughs> you should, you gonna get there. Man. Um, if you had to go back to college, what's something that you would do over or like do better? Like if you had one thing to choose. Nutrition on God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, nutrition. Yeah. Just eating better. What? <laughs> man. You think you think that would have made you something different? Probably. I ain't gonna lie. For real. I used to be eating man. too much. No, not just eating too much. Not eating enough. Yeah. Eating a, eating. You got that chat. What is that chat? What's your cinco um, theory? Eating a whole bunch of McDonald's and all that. 
Uh, just be eating whatever. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I, I, I do, it's, 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 it's sprinkled with healthy though. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. McDonald's with broccoli. <laughs> Man, I, 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 watch, I might eat a, a nice chicken salad with some yeah. tomato, I mean, all types of, you know what I'm okay. saying, broccoli, spinach, all that, and go to Wingstop. Okay, and so then, that's good, yeah, me? but, okay. But, um, right now, that's where I know I need to really lock in and mm-hmm. get a real nutritionist or someone that's gonna sit down with me and be like, look, you need to eat this. Okay. Or have somewhere to go with this at this time of day. Okay. To really stay on my on a diet, because that's where I feel like, I feel like I could really be a different. You feel way like, different yeah, when the food was different. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. When I was training, I was, I was eating them consistent meals. You feel, your body fueled. So it's not that I, like, I'm, I'm not feel, I'm just trying to stay, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't got to go back to the shop. I like a little car, you know what I'm saying? Make sure it's okay. still running. Now, were you a highly, I believe you was a highly recruited player coming out of high school? I was, I wasn't at first. So I got up Kind of came on late. So yeah. how was your process being a highly recruited player? Like, tell me some of the goods and some of the bads. Um, some of the goods, you know, they want you to make that impact quick. Mm-hmm. And me, I. Started playing football for real, for real, my junior year of high school. For real? So. What was you doing before that? Hooping, a track. For real? That made you cold for football, especially the track. Like, what you used to run, like 100? Yeah, 200? 100, 200, long jump, throwing. It was really running. Yeah, I was running, getting the hand off, all that. <laughs> That's why you used to smoke it now. What? Um, but. And you never thought about football. Was you still yeast? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still a little, yeah, I, I ain't touch no weights. I ain't, I'm yeah. telling you, man. I, I, went into, I went to high school uh, thinking I was going to be a, a hooper. Hooper. Man, I have a hoop dream. Because, uh, oh, yeah. Perfect. Ivan Rabb, Paris Austin, mm. a couple of my homies, they was there, they was hooping. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be, I want to be on the team. Um, yeah, quick reality check. <laughs> man, I wasn't 6'4", wasn't 6'6". Six, six. Uh, you know, you was tall for football. I was tall, I was tall for a football player, so I was like, okay, I could, I could still use my height to an yeah. advantage. Um, and then I was just, I was fast, so it was like, easy. Man, Especially in high school, I know it was, it was. They put me at the end. That was my first position. <laughs> Go get the quarterback. I was oh, yeah. ooh, took the edge. I learned how I like two pass rush moves. Mm-hmm. I had that and the spin. Mm-hmm. I only had a spin because I used to watch Bob Miller. Mm-hmm. Bob Miller's stupid. Mark Miller is stupid. I used to watch his YouTube highlights. I was like, he's cold. He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> uh, so, is different. Man. Um, now, what's some of the bads that you feel like it came with? Or like um, annoying, and bad, whatever man, you want to call it? Um, yeah, you know, being a highly recruited player, you know, they, you know, a lot of coaches do expect that, you know, they want you to be on top of things. Or like when they, even in, uh, in college, when I first came in there, mm-hmm. um, the other players, you know, you know, you you 18, 17 years old, you know, you, you feel like you know you're the best player at your high school, and then you step into the to to the real world, mm-hmm. and you you with some some with some yeah. real football players, <laughs> and you like, okay, yeah, they like, I, I don't care about them stars. Yeah. You like, okay, and they yeah. want to make sure you know about exactly, yeah. and you know. Some guys are like, oh, I already know how, how. Nah, you don't know how it feels until you step foot on that, on yeah. that, in that college, the gridiron. Yeah. Are you practicing against 22 year olds, 23 year olds? Who trying to go get out? Who have, who have kids yeah. or a kid or is married or, you know what I'm saying? That's where I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, definitely, I mean, with the whole recruiting experience in high school, it's kind of a similar deal when I transferred in college, but on a different level. Yeah. If you wasn't playing football, what would you be doing? Um, I think a lot. Of, I'd probably be somewhere, either in front of the camera or behind it. So now, when you say behind it, like you like shooting, I'd either probably learn how to shoot or end up probably getting into some type of modeling, some type of fashion, some type of okay. you know what I'm saying. Like you know, I like. You know, again, fly, like, you know what I'm saying, putting it on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't always there, but I ain't gonna lie to you, I worked with what I got. Yeah, that's it. You know, I, I ain't always had something, but 
uh, you know, I'll make them J's. I was cleaning them at the house, making sure they was, you know, good on Friday. No. Come on, I was, yeah. I um, but no, it was, it was, you know, that's probably where I see myself. Uh, if not, I mean, I got a little, little art background. Um, used to dance a little bit, used to do some visual art, so. One way I know you want to be able to make money is through the NFL. Now, a lot of guys are starting to build their brands and just find other ways to, you know, generate income. Do you feel like there's anything that you know you might want to start dabbling, dabbling in once you get to where you want to get to? Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I definitely have to sit down and kind of see where if I have, you know, the opportunities too. I definitely want to uh, prioritize that, you know, might help out some family members for and sure. put some other people in opportunities to make money for themselves. Yeah. But, um, you know, I definitely want to always, you know, see if I can get back to the community first and then mm -hmm. see if I could uh, do do something on my own. For you know? sure. Um, as far as uh, even having my own, I feel like, you know, just creative studio. So where anybody can come in and make some music or just having my, my people's in there doing their own thing. And, um, even, you know, some young fashion designers coming yeah. in and cooking something up and cooking, you know, like. That's gonna be the one that's cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> definitely having something like that available, um, you know, always, always tapping in. But I feel like, I mean, with having, having the Bay Area as home, I mean, anything could happen out there. For sure. So, for for sure. sure. My boy. Man, appreciate you having me. Come on, I appreciate you coming on, spitting game with me, man. Me man, no Eiffel. Free game right now, free game. <laughs> Welcome to the trenches. Good looking, my boy. Man, thank you.